They're basically allowed to rape women in Saudi Arabia. And a lot of these folks are running around Germany, and the left thinks it's cute. Uh, they're actually, the mayors are saying, don't wear short skirts, you know, it's your fault. Uh, the, but I mean, can you imagine if a German did this, and the media even spins it and says German men are doing it. But you were getting into the uh, waves of folks being brought into Europe, and we'll show some of the footage of the waves, uh, millions of people, uh, David Icke. Yeah, I mean, the question is, why is it happening? I mean, if you research this uh, conspiracy uh, for not very long, you realize that it is like um, a room of dominoes in a line, and you push one domino down, and that creates the next domino to fall. So we've had this situation in the Middle East where we've had all this uh, uh, bombing and destruction and chaos and, and catastrophe externally created by uh, the United States, NATO, Britain. And this has forced um, large numbers of people to leave. Um, and this um, wave into Europe um, has uh, of genuine people who deserve our help because of, of the situation that the West has put them in has been joined by vast numbers of other people who are not refugees but are seeking to get into Europe. And it's being allowed to happen for this reason. And it's been long planned for this reason. They want a world government, a world central bank, world army, um, and uh, world currency, etc. And under the world government, they want these super states. They want the European Union, of course, the American Union, the Pacific Union, all these, these super states under the world government. And these super states are designed not to be countries any longer, but to be broken up into regions, subordinate regions that are easy to control. You've talked about this in relation to the United States uh, and North America, and it, it's planned for the, the world. Now, the biggest resistance to the breakup and ending of sovereignty is a sense of national identity, a sense of distinct culture. And what is happening, and has been happening for a long time, I mean, that's just before I mention this, um, it came out a few years ago that during the Blair administration, came out in, 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 in uh, uh, documents and an and insider speaking out, that they had set out to allow unfettered immigration into Britain, not to help the immigrants. They were pawns in the game, though they didn't realize it. But to, quote, change the face of humans, of uh, British society, to a point where it would never go back to what it was before. Well, that's Peter and Sutherland. He even wrote in the BBC that Europeans are bad, and this is to end Europeans being homogenous for balkanization purposes. This is all connected. Now, look at Europe, um, Alex, and you'll look at a country that has um, an enormously strong sense of its culture, sense of itself, sense of its uniqueness, sense of its history, and what you're looking at is Germany. And the resistance to the end of Germany, which they want down the line, and the end of the German culture would be absolutely massive if they knew that was going on. And the idea is, not just in Germany, but that's why Germany has been really picked out in this, what's happening. Stay there. This is Keith, sir. You're absolutely on target. Amazing info, davidike.com. The new book, you can find it there. This is it. Germany runs, basically, and funds all of the EU now. The EU was always designed in their own words to implode Europe once it got control and then fold it into a larger world government. By the way, we did a historic big interview with Louis Farrakhan two days ago. We'll give you details at the bottom of the hour. Detailing when that's going to be released, it will be a big newsmaker. Um, Farrakhan said, quote, he's changed in the interview, too. It's, it's, it's big. Uh, but a lot of people are really assessing, reassessing uh, things happening in the world. Because everybody can feel that huge change is upon us, some of it good, some of it bad. But if good people don't get involved, evil will triumph in this time of change. David Icke was getting into the fact, really deep stuff that's so on target from my research, about why they're flooding Europe. Destroy the sovereignty of the countries. They're even telling them the soccer teams can't be named after countries anymore because nationalism itself is bad. Then you bring in groups to break up the country, make it all about ethnic stuff, the opposite of multiculturalism, and then annex the Middle East in the name of controlling the migrant floods and invade more countries. 
Now, David Icke just went over all that. What comes next after that, David Icke? Well, I tell you, the other point I want to make is that um, people have been um, taken aback, not least Germans, at what Chancellor Merkel was doing. When this, um, uh, this great flood of migrants um, began, um, she opened the doors to Germany uh, without any question, without any policy, without anything. And, and people in Germany were, were like, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? Well, what she's doing is this. Chancellor Merkel is a 100% owned and willingly owned asset of this hidden hand. And the reason that she's done what she's done um, is because the agenda demanded it. And because of that, she has... Um, acted and reacted, or hasn't, to uh, what has happened in the way that she has. And the other point, Alex, is um, uh, again and again, when you, when you study how the hidden hand works, it plays one group of victims or one group of stooges, whatever you want to call them, um, against another to create the divide and rule. And they see, again, we're back to the dominoes. If this domino goes down, this domino is going to go down, and that means this will happen. If you do A, B will, will and happen. And they never want you to think like that, but in their own books, right. they admit they're rigging 20, 30, 50, 100-year plans. So break yeah. down the rest of the plan where this goes from here. Well, exactly. And, and, and so the other point uh, of, of the migration is they know that um, certain things are going to happen. Because if you get a large number of people into any other, from one culture into another, then you're going to have some very nice people and you're going to have some very unnice people. That's what happens. And, and, and as things happen, and we're seeing some of them now, um, that the hidden hand knew would happen, you're obviously going to get an angry reaction from the population, uh, the, the German population, and you're going to create uh, conflict you're going to create resentment and you're going to create um, divide and rule conflict in Europe um, between those uh, who, who are uh, coming in and those that are already there. And um, uh, some of the, the, the decent people in both groups are going to be caught up in the crossfire. And, and so the more chaos you can have, order, ab chaos, order out of chaos, and the more you can break down a sense of um, culture, a sense of unique culture, that together justifies a number of things. It justifies um, a, a police state to um, to stop the, the, the conflict. That's my next point. Let me interject chaos. this, David, I, because I want you to continue. But this is so important. It's where I was going next. There's a, they don't want us to ever think about connecting dots or dominoes because if we ever have common sense, it's it's over. They bring in the radical Muslims, they let them attack, and then they say, we're going to take your free speech away across Europe because this happened and, and arrest nationalists and arrest Le Pen in a response to them bringing them in and the same European governments backed destabilizing the Middle East and are involved. So at every level, they're doing it. And then now they bring even more groups. And as we said, when they gave them thousands of Stinger missiles a few years ago, they have articles now in the London Independent going, oh, now they have Stinger missiles from the West. But it's but then it talks about how they're fixing some of the old ones and might make them oh, work. I love that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That one. I saw as the today. cover story for them now shooting down the airliners. I mean, they're literally running it all. Our governments are, and they never get in trouble because none of the media will point out how ridiculous it is. David Icke, sorry, I'm ranting. It's a, it, it's a script, and, you know, there are some journalists who are manipulating in full knowledge of what they're doing, but they're the minority. We're back to the program again. If you don't see how the dots connect, you don't see how the dominoes fall onto the next David. domino. You can't see that it is pre-planned and has been uh, uh, pl planned to play out like this for a very, very long time. Then, And you're a journalist. All you can see is dots. You can't see pictures. Let me expand I'm on that. Let me, I've got to interrupt because it's so key. You're absolutely right. I got up this morning, saw the headline, 
and instantly knew that it was a cover story for the thousands of missiles and that it would talk about them repairing the ones the West gave them. So they make the story about repairing them and make it look like they developed Stinger missiles. But then you read the third paragraph, it admits they've given them the Stinger missiles. I mean, it, but, but I didn't even need to read it. I'm so, you, just like you, I'm so used to their lies. I see the headline and I know what the spin's gonna be. That's not being a conspiracy theorist. It's knowing how they operate. Go, go ahead, sir. Yeah, well, of course, the, 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 the biggest problem is the, uh, the coincidence theorist. That's the worst one. <laughs> it's all a coincidence. I mean, it's, it's a head shaker. But um, we're back to the, to the lie and the truth. So um, you've got the, uh, the, the lie narrative for what's happening, and you've got to suppress the truth narrative. And this is why the man-child, who is Mark Zuckerberg, and this outrageously uh, uh, censorship-laden organization, Facebook, was caught on a live mic at the UN, with who? Merkel. Chancellor Merkel. Mm -hmm. um, talking about suppressing um, posts that are saying what's happening in Germany, because it doesn't fit the narrative. This is the whole point. So if you're Google or your uh, your Facebook or any of these organizations who, who are all um, strands in the web, ultimately, I mean, if, if Mark Zuckerberg is is the one running uh, Facebook, ultimately, then I'm, I live in a bloody igloo. Um, and so um, you're seeing this suppression of anything that, I mean, I'm a, many things uh, uh, it's censored by uh, Facebook, including a, 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 a posting of a, a, a story about um, Sandy Hook. Uh, and it's because if you're challenging the official narrative, you're challenging the lie on which the transformation of society is being justified. This is what, what, what's happening. And, and people should realize this. If, if, if it's in the mainstream, um, it's almost certainly um, a lie, even though uh, the journalists themselves might not know because they're so ignorant of what's going on. And, and, and if, you're being, if things are being censored by Facebook, it's not out, out of, I mean, when you see some of the things that happen on social media and that are posted, the idea that it's, it's to protect the sensibilities of No, Facebook, no, it's key stuff. It like like when I interviewed difference. Navy SEAL families, uh, like within weeks of Benghazi and, and other things, when I interview key people breaking stuff, it just gets censored and blocked. They're, they're definitely blocking key info that exposes their agenda, as you just said, David. And, it's, and, 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 and that just shows you where the power is. They are terrified of the truth. And so what we need to do is keep banging it out there. That's why I, I'm, I'm going on this um, uh, world speaking tour um, starting later this year, and it's open-ended. I am going to give every fiber of my being and, and, and do everything possible in the next, well, beyond, but certainly in the next three years, because this, this is the eye of the storm. This is the high eye of the hurricane. These are the three years when we can start to make fundamental impacts upon this uh, agenda so that the house of cards that it is mm -hmm. um, will fall, because... Uh, it's a house of cards because a it's based on lies and and b it's based on a programmed population. Once the people um, uh, start to break out of what I call phantom self and start to see beyond it, start to realize it's a program and they've been programmed and their perception of everything has actually been downloaded so that they'll see the world the way that the 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 uh, agenda demands. Once they start to connect the dots and see that actually it's not all random, it's all connected then the house of cards starts to fall because although it seems so powerful and all powerful it ain't because it's I based agree. on being secret and it's based on the public being asleep we put those two things right and the house of cards will fall david we've got a few minutes left here i'm going to skip this network break because this is so important today uh to go over all this information undoubtedly the point of emergence when the whole program starts coming out in the open has really begun in the last year it's accelerating exponentially i look at the acceleration it's going to be crazy within 10 12 14 months obviously but newtonian physics is accurate in this plane of existence the forever action there's an opposite you know and and equal a, a reaction basically and or equal and opposite reaction and so I would have never thought, you talked about decompartmentalizing police officers, military, you know, how they're a perfect example of compartmentalization, protecting their own enslavers. But 
particularly, as you said, people on the inside going public in media, in government, in the military, in the police, because they really see how evil it is. And because you and I and countless others have helped decompartmentalize them, that's really going to give the system a problem. But then I read white papers that are public and the globalists admit, oh, we're just going to automation and technocracy. They believe that's their holy grail where everything's going to be robots. Everything's going to be automated. Everything's going to be smart meters, self-driving cars, uh, you know, self-controlled, you know, guns where you don't have a choice. And that's going to be their answers, this total robotic world that, quote, makes it all convenient, but really takes all human power away. And that's the attacks on farms and ranches and Amish and outdoor farmers markets. I'm really getting to the point of it's true, but we can't just be hippies. We've got to have people that are on the land. We've got to fight in the cities politically, but we've got to work and at least support people that are on the land and, and and vote with our money to never support big globalist operations and literally keep our children with other like-minded people uh, and understand we are in an occupied planet. I mean, it's like childhood's in. I'm not saying it's aliens. I mean, that, you're saying it's interdimensional, whatever. It probably, I mean, it's just so, so obvious. It's out to destroy us. It's anti-human. Archetype, whatever, it's evil aliens want to get us. I mean, you know, I, I'm not saying that. You're saying that. The point is, is that it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. They want to abort planet Earth. They want to play God. They want everything ugly. They want to mutate every species. They might as well be, you know, whatever from the ninth dimension because they're that anti-human. The elites say they're a new species. They say they're splitting off from us. They say, I don't believe in God, but I'm about to become God, you know, if you're uh, Ray Kurzweil. This is their big conferences. I know rich billionaires, as I'm sure you do. I know powerful Hollywood people, and they've come to me. In fact, I want to look at the camera and tell the viewers this and go back to David Icke. I'm talking to billionaires, Hollywood stars. You've heard a lot of them here on air, folks. I don't make this stuff up. I tell you the... Putin listens to the show, you know, watch, he's willing to get getting an interview. I tell you, Matt Drudge, listener, boom, he shows up. I mean, we don't, you know, Louis Farrakhan, huge listener. You're like, well, Louis Farrakhan, yeah, he's changing. Wait till you see the interview. The point is, is that I talked to a lot of people, though, and they go, listen, I knew you 20 years ago or 15 years ago, and I thought some of what you are saying was true and liked you and thought you were funny. But listen, I've had elites come to me and say, if you want life extension or you want to be part of the breakaway civilization, you go along with the system and you shut up and they get scared. They go, it's all real. And the head of a major media empire or the head of a major bank will go, you're damn right. It's real. We're bringing in world government. We're going to reduce population. You better join the right team and you stay away from that Alex Jones. I mean, they kind of take the mask off and these people are scared. So, so David, Icke, they've gotten to the point now in Hollywood, especially because you see Kurt Russell going public and all these other people. They are going to folks and literally basically threatening their families, but then saying, or come get on the spaceship. And I'm not saying they don't say spaceship, but it's like the high tech reservation. We've got the high tech. We're going to be gods. You know, we're going to, I mean, you, you see it in the headlines, the elite are obsessed with living forever, world government. It's all out in the open now. And they're going to the, to the big culture icons that could really change things. And they're telling them, and some of these icons say, I'm not going to join you. And they go, fine. But you keep your mouth shut or we'll kill you like we killed your daddy. And I, I'm going to leave it at that point with that famous group. But, uh, I mean, this that's how hardcore this has gotten, David. Go ahead. we got six minutes till break, and we'll let you go. Thank you for the time, sir. Right. Well, um, crikey, I could talk for hours now. Um, what, what we're looking at is uh, what I've called for years now the Hunger Games Society, where you've got a tiny elite of less than 1% that um, control everything or politics, or government, or, or money, et cetera, uh, world army. And you have a, uh, a mass population that survive um, in servitude and, uh, and, and, and in deprivation and in slavery. Um, and I'm talking about people who this minute might call themselves well off and it doesn't affect me. And in between those two is the strata of the police state which is there to mercilessly, this is why they're recruiting more and more psychopaths, um, to mercil mercilessly impose the will of the less than 1% upon the mass of um, human slaves. Um, and a key part of this is the assimilation. And you've um, brought up uh, the, the topic, transhumanism. Transhumanism, if you, if you listen to people like Kurzweil, you, you, you are told that 
uh, transhumanism, um, putting technology inside the body, what they're calling implantables, will make us superhuman. No, it won't. It will make us super robots. It will make us super subhuman. Um, and so what is happening, and I go into this in The Phantom Self in some detail, and the chapter I write about this, I think, is the most important chapter I've ever written in any book. Um, we're seeing what I call the totalitarian tiptoe of assimilating human minds into technology. It's uh, one major, major stepping stone to this is what is now a global addiction to smartphone technology, where we're losing, we're losing the, the young generation. To, they admit it's rewiring the brain, brain damaging. Yeah, well, exactly. I go into this in the book, and if, 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 this is absolutely what is happening. Uh, it's rewiring the brain. It's dumbing down the brain. And there's perfect peer pressure to have social friends. They've got to be on it. So the human element lures you in to the dehumanization. Yeah. It, it, but it, 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 it's an addiction. If you are um, an alcoholic, what's, what, who controls you? The alcohol. If you're a drug addict, what's, what, who's the controller? The drug. If you are an addict of technology, who controls you? The technology. That's right. This is this is bringing the humans in and technology together, and they're caught. They went from smartphones, and they've now gone to what they call wearables. These are the Bluetooth in the ear. These are the Google Glass, um, and these are the uh, the Apple Watches. And the next stage, and, and they're pushing this along faster and faster because they want. They have to get this done before enough people awaken to bring And by the way, down. sir, as you, you said it before, they admitted it, they admit it's to take over our consciousness. It's, it's basically a holocaust. It's basically genocide. They say humans are crap. This new merger will be God. They're announcing they're going to end our world, and we're just sitting here with our thumbs in our you-know-whats. Well, we're, we're probably on the smartphone. Well, I'm not, but a lot of people are on the smartphone while it's all happening. Um, this guy, Ray Kurzweil, uh, this Google executive who, who is the, uh, uh, the, the spokesman for Frankenstein, um, he, is, uh, he has said that not too far into what we call the future, um, that most human thinking will be done from the cloud. And what he's referring to, although he won't tell you, of course, for obvious reasons, is something I've been writing about in the books for years. That is childhood's end. That is the MI6 uh, you know, writer, he admitted that was an allegory for the real plan to put us into a collective computer mind where yeah, we all I mean, die and join the Evermind. I can't believe what a cult of freaks these are, David. But, but that's um, what, we're, what we're looking at is what I've been writing about for years, what I call the technological sub-reality. That's what he's calling the cloud. It's, it's, it's a, um, a, a Wi-Fi, if you like, a massive Wi-Fi cloud, a massive Wi-Fi technological sub-reality in the region of the planet that um, uh, humans uh, live in, which will It's a new be dimension. It's an admitted new dimension where we can go and live in a false reality that also encroaches on the third dimension and gobbles up all of our data to cheat us and screw us and control us. It's literally a cloud of demonic locusts. It will be doing the thinking. And the, the chapter I write in Phantom Self is called trans phantomism and i call it that because i've talked about phantom self and 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 and, and i am my name I'm, I'm my life story i'm my color i'm my race i'm my religion no your infinite awareness having that experience and it's taken even that level of the program what i call phantom self it's it's designed to take it into a whole new level yes. of thought and perception